Well, our football team has, has had uh, two really good practices at this point, and, and they have a great attitude. Uh, I like the, uh, uh, the way that we uh, ran to the ball on defense. Uh, we're excited to go to Mississippi State. Uh, man, did they look good on film. They uh, just had an outstanding game versus LSU. Have a great running back, great quarterback, wideouts. I love their center, Cole Smith. I think he's a good player. And defensively, they got seven sacks. So uh, certainly, they they had a wonderful game, and and uh, we're looking forward to going out there and uh, competing. First up is Gary Graves of the Associated Press. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, when you see the air raid. Um, what's the hardest part about trying to trying to contain that? Well, I mean, you you have to get them on the ground. I think I think they'll take some underneath throws and and uh, they'll take whatever you give them basically. And and uh, you know you have to tackle them. I, I don't know that you can contest every throw and things of that nature because um, they'll they'll run some rub outs and some different things of that nature and get guys open but uh, once they get get guys open we have to get them on the ground we have to we have to disrupt the quarterback thanks coach next is Bob Hull of the Arkansas Democrat is that hey hey Sam how you doing Bob uh, Zach Williams uh, got some, you know, offensive playing time last week. He made quite tackles. I think he got his first sack. How do you think he played? Um, and how's how's uh, what, what do you expect from Zach moving forward? How's how's Dorian doing? Uh, Dorian did not practice yesterday, so uh, we'll wait and see there uh, on Zach. Zach, you know, he played some ball last year for us, and. Uh, uh, I thought he uh, played hard. Uh, obviously, he, gave, he got a sack, and, and so that'll do something uh, for his confidence. Uh, but uh, we're certainly going to need him uh, for pressure on the quarterback on sat on on Costello on Saturday. Morning. You've been around the league for a while, and obviously we're in unprecedented times, and everybody's facing different issues with their teams, a COVID, uh, different playing atmospheres, and everything. And having played what everybody thinks is one of the top ten top teams in the SEC, and playing well against them in the first half, do you think this year is one where we're going to have a little bit of parity in the SEC from top to bottom because of everything we're facing? You know. I I don't really know. I, you know, I think there's a lot of good teams. I think there would be parity regardless of of, um, of whether it was a COVID situation or not. I think there's a lot of good teams in the SEC. Um, but, you know, the game's four quarters, and we, we have to figure out how to finish a, a football game. You know, we haven't won many games in the SEC any for a while, and uh, so we have to learn how to win. And, and hopefully that'll come sooner than later. Next is Scotty Bordelon of Hold Hog Sports. Hey, Sam, I wanted to ask you about Justin Marshall, just kind of what makes him captain material, and if you've been able to get to know him a little bit behind the scenes. He's quiet, but he's a hardworking guy. Uh, has obviously has respect of the the team because they voted him as captain, but much respect from us, our coaching staff, and myself personally. Uh, but he's a hardworking guy. He's one that you know, if everybody on the team worked like he did, you'd have a fine football team. Uh, just much respect. He's a college graduate already, and and I'm just very very proud of him. He handles himself off the field like he's supposed to handle yourself and. 
a very high represent, representation uh, for the Arkansas Razorbacks from him. Thanks. This is Steve Moulton, WDZN. Steve, your line's open. Go ahead. <laughs> Murphy of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, Sam, you said on Monday that the pre-snap alignment on offense was really important so Felipe could concentrate on what he's seeing defensively instead of running traffic. I wonder what you've seen out of that and, and how important that is to, to get ready for this week. Uh, it was much better. You know, I know that's part of the quarterback's job, but it's hard to look downfield, see what's going on, see pre-snap reads as a quarterback when you're at your own team trying to get them locked up. And so that was has been a big emphasis, uh, paying attention to the signals, getting lined up fast. Um, so we've done a better job of that this week. We got we need to take that off the quarterback. That was, you have a position, you should play your position, get lined up, get set, get ready to go so the quarterback can be the quarterback. Yeah, and on the team, when you're coming off a game where they really kind of hold you down, him being a team captain, I wonder what you've seen from his response and how he's, uh, you know, exhibited himself with to his teammates. Well, he's been fine. I mean, he blocked really well in the game. Uh, obviously, we knew it was going to be tough against Georgia runs the ball, and, and it was. You know, he had 11 carries for 20 yards, and, uh, it was tough sledding going on in there. But uh, there's other things where he can help our football team. He understands that. And he, he was a, a very, very good blocker in pass protection. And uh, and he led uh, the entire game on the sidelines. And certainly he wants to do better for the football team and himself than 20 yards. But it was what it was, and you you know you have to move on and, and keep working. And O line's got to get better. A lot of things go into that, but certainly if he'll stay the same as he he has been, he'll he'll end up having a good year. Thanks. We'll wrap you up today with Nate Allen. Thank you. 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 Uh, Catalan played well um, and missed a few tackles in the second half that certainly we're working on our tackling we have all year but uh, made some big hits is a leader back there and uh, for redshirt freshman is a dang fine player and, and we're, we're awful happy uh, he's on our team obviously he has a different set of challenges this week because uh, he's going to have to be all over the field and and uh, because of their raid. Thank you. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, I, I thought we played well. I thought we uh, played hard. I think that we we're explosive and consistent. Looking forward to playing Arkansas. First question is going to come from Chip Howard of KZNE. Hey, Are you are you with us? Yeah, go ahead, Chip. I am. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, the question was: After getting such a big win to open the season, everybody's been telling your players all week how great they are. Do you have to do anything differently this week during practice to refocus them for this game? Um, we you can just try to reinforce the importance of being focused. You know, I think. Uh, and we have tried to reinforce that. We haven't ch changed the, uh, you know, the whole uh, process or routine, though. So this is this is you've been in a bunch of different conferences, and it seems like every time you show up with with your offense, there are people kind of surprised at the success that you've had. Does that amuse you sometimes? Uh, I don't. I don't think about it very much. Um, I. Uh, I guess it surprises me sometimes, but 
I feel like we have good coaches, good players, and everybody working together. I think that's, uh, you know, that's all pretty solid, you know. Thanks. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, is Bob Hall of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, hey, Mike, how you doing? Um, you know, we know Good. that, you know, Arkansas's AD and I guess Associate AD and some other folks, you know, came there to, to talk to you last year about the Arkansas job when you were still Washington State. I was wondering what, what you remember about that and kind of what you think of the Arkansas program and what, what kind of interest you had in that job at the time. Um, I have the utmost respect for the University of Arkansas. I don't have anything to any conversations that we may have had uh, or between us. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, and you guys had, I think it was seven sacks last week. I think it was six different guys had at least half a sack. Uh, what, what's the key to having so many different guys get sacks uh, in a game like that against LSU? Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any key. I thought we played hard. I did think we we tried to keep them off balance with pressure coming from a bunch of different directions. And, and uh, well, and I'm, I'm just glad some of them got home because uh, LSU's really explosive. Thanks. All right. Next is Brandon Marcello of 24-7 Sports. Hey, Coach, uh, and speaking to K.J. Costello last night, he spoke a little bit about just how his last season at Stanford was disappointing because of all the injuries he went through. And um, then obviously you guys hooked up and, and, and met, and it kind of rekindled his love of football, the battle through those injuries and rehab. And he compared you to his old high school coach because you're both kind of old school I guess, can you kind of describe the relationship and how that all began uh, with KJ and, and where it kind of stands today? Well, that's good. I mean, I see him all the time. I, you know, since I, I coached the quarterbacks, uh, you know, I mean, we have quite a lot of dialogue every day. Um, you know, I guess most of it is uh, um, <clears throat> sitting by the film and I'm running the... Uh, uh, the remote, um, but no, I talk with them quite a lot. But you know, I mean, the thing is, is if uh, you're going to be any good, it's a partnership. It's not just a, you know, you, you don't just send memos or something. I mean, it's a partnership, and and uh, we discuss and uh, talk about the best way to, you know, uh, achieve certain things with plays and. Uh, constant uh, kind of give and take and exchange. So there is that. That happens every, every day. You know, a lot, a lot of folks always want to compare quarterbacks and everything. You've had some amazing quarterbacks, obviously, but how does how does KJ kind of stand up there with all those other greats you've had, whether it's on the field or off the field? Well, right now, I mean, uh, he's off to a great start. I mean, this is probably as good a start as any of them have had. <clears throat> so he's off to he's off to a good start, and, and you know, but it's how many times uh, you can do it in a row and how consistent you are. But I do think uh, the ultimate thing that uh, you want out of your quarterback is to elevate the play of the players around him, and I think KJ does a really good job of that. Thanks. Thank you. This is Tom Murphy, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, Mike, I'm wondering what your evaluation is of the Arkansas offensive personnel team. I think they're good. I think they're. Uh, I think they're. They've got some explosive guys. I think that uh, uh, kind of tough and nasty on the O line. Um, you know, some of those guys I remember. Uh, from before, just high school in general recruiting, but uh, uh, no, I think they're good. Next is John Hoover, Sports Illustrated. Hey, good morning, Mike. Um, I'm working on a story about head coaches who also call their own plays as offensive coordinators. 
and what kind of challenges that could present. I believe you've always called your own plays. Has that evolved for you over the years? Do you find yourself delegating or taking suggestions more now than you used to? Well, there's no suggestions. I mean, um, <laughs> you know, it's an offensive Um And then it's for the three to gauge where I'm on the head. But about what might be best and the best way to do it. So who all still calls their play? I don't know. It's not a huge list. Um, I'm, I cover Lincoln Riley, so that's the one I'm kind of kind of curious about. If, I'm, I'm curious if you've ever shared any information with him about that phenomenon or if you maybe offered some advice to him over the years about how to do both at the same time. With Lincoln? Yeah. Well, well you... If you know he works for me, he works for me for like eight years. Yeah. No, I know that. But just oh, talking I about doing, doing both the head coach and the coordinator since he's been the last three years, three and a half years, if you've had any changes uh, with him. Not, not a lot. Not really. Uh, maybe a little passing. He, um, <laughs> but, you know, when he, when he worked for me, you know, he, he had two roles. Um, this is starting to clear back to when he was a speed assistant and a GA and, and a full time guy. <laughs> he was my pretty much anywhere that he spent. So he, he, he did, you know, he, he, uh, he knew how I did it as, as, as well as anybody that there was. Because, um, you know, he was right there. If I was in a meeting, he was in a meeting. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, get take numbers on stuff or if something cross my mind, mind I would expect here uh, look at this research that um, one time I even had him um, oh uh, who was he? I had to do a whole research thing on Sid Gilman wanted to know all about Sid Gilman so I said him you know, he, you know, he was pretty good on the computer. He looked all over the computer to find out all he could about Sid Gilman. And, uh, and then, of course, he became the youngest offensive, or youngest offensive assistant to cut. Um, but, uh, no, he did, he did a very good job. And then, um, with regard to calling play, so we talked back and forth on the, on the headphones. So, I would say as far as how I went about it, he probably had the the closest look and the and the longest look at it. So, uh, uh, but you know, we we, we text a little sometimes, or if we're in the same place, we'll you know we'll hang out and talk. Yeah. What's the hardest part about doing both? Just time. I mean, you know, I mean, if uh, his. I got into coaching the coach. Um, and so, uh, uh, you see, if you're coordinating your top plays and you're the head coach, it's too big of a job. I mean, it's, 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 it's too big of a job. Okay, but then if you withdraw yourself from it and you're not coordinating or uh, coaching your position, then <clears throat> I don't think feel involved enough and say Clements uh, and it's too little of a job you know, I think we'd all like to get that middle gear. that's not you know that, that neutral place where it's perfect and that's kind of your thing it's either it's either harder than you'd like or not a, not as involved as you would like and so um, you know I never have been able to achieve that perfect spot and so then you delegate what you can but it's never quite enough Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you.